Hi everybody. So this week we're going to be talking a little bit about some decoration processes regarding glazing. So the first one is going to be a technique called wax resist. And what wax resist is, is it's a liquid wax. And what I have here is an already glazed bowl. So I've already dipped it and I've wiped the foot off. And now I'm going to brush some wax on it and you'll see what we can do with it a little bit later. But it's going to be something that we could use for adding multiple glazes or we can even use um, what I'm going to show you in a second too is also some marking mixes. So I'm going to just go ahead and just really simply um, do some decorating. I'm not going to, just for demo's sake, I'm going to be quick about this. But you can really get as involved with the decorating process as you would like. But this brush is on and you know I have some brushes here in the studio that you're welcome to use but if this is something and a technique that you want to pursue further I'd recommend maybe buying some more specific brushes that yield a little bit more of a precise line quality if that's something you're after so for instance I have these little this little set of Japanese sumi brushes. Um, that's just one example. But for now, I did a really simple design. Okay, so this teapot has been dipped in chino, and I'm just gonna do a very simple wax pattern around the entire piece. So, so as you guys could see here, I'm using the banding wheel to get these concentric circle so if that's something that you're more interested in in getting a more uniform design around something then you can use one of these banding wheels and I do want to mention that if you anticipate using two glazes to give yourself at least a half inch if not a full inch from the bottom of your piece to allow for your two glazes to run a little bit and just account for it so that it doesn't destroy your piece and it doesn't stick to the shelf or the cookie that you place it on so Marking mixes, you don't have to be as careful. You can go pretty much all the way to the bottom with the marking mix, but just be mindful and understand that if you put two glazes together that are potentially runny, you're gonna end up with a very runny surface. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to share with you all for another glaze decorating technique is something that we can call marking mixes or washes. And here in the studio, we currently have a red iron oxide that's mixed up, cobalt, and a black. And what the black is made from a mason stain, and the cobalt is made from cobalt carbonate. But what you could see here, it's a very liquidy solution. And it's meant to be brushed on, or you can even use a squeeze bottle to squeeze it on, but they're relatively watery, and they're meant to just um, enhance your surface. So if you're someone that likes to decorate the surface, you can use these. And again, this is a Chino glaze. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably, I'll use my black to give an example. This little piece here is a dark clay body, but it's got the, the same Chino as this. And then this is the black marking mix. So a relatively simple design on here. And I'm gonna actually use my little tray as an inkwell. You don't need to do this, but um, it's just something I wanted to try out. So I have, again, your brushes. It, it's totally up to you. If you want to use what I have in the studio, that's fine. You can buy a set like this. I got this on Amazon relatively inexpensively. I think it was $15 and I got a whole set of brushes. But the way this works, it's going to be similar to that wax resist. I'm brushing this on top of a glaze, but there's no reason why you can't do this underneath a glaze, so it's really up to you. There's a little bit more forgiveness if you do it underneath the glaze, and um, a lot less forgiveness if you do it on top. But the thing with doing it underneath a glaze, you gotta make sure that the glaze you apply after is a transparent glaze if you really wanna get the most effect from your marks. But I'll go ahead and use the marking mix on top here. I'm gonna just continue with my really simple brushwork here. 
So this murky mix is relatively watery. It could be thicker. But you could see when it's going on, it's almost like watercolor. And the tricky thing about this is once it's on, it's on there. And if you make a mistake, you either have to disguise it or you could wash your whole glaze off. The other option would be to scrape it back. But since this is pretty watery, it's going to get into and absorb down into your glaze. You can also use marking mixes and wax together. So what I ended up actually doing on this piece was I did this marking mix first and then I went back over it with wax and did another design on top of that. And you'll see it later in the video that I dip this piece in a second glaze and you'll see the results from that. But it's just another option where you can start creating a more complex glaze surface. Okay, so while the other wax resist dries, I'm gonna use marking mix with this wax resist. So I dipped this piece in the Ohada khaki and I'm gonna use the black marking mix on it just to modify the surface a little bit. So you're gonna be able to see how you can use the wax resist and the marking mixes together. So I'm just gonna take this brush And then you'll see this pattern sort of come to be. I'm just gonna do a nice even coat. So this is gonna be black stripes on a red glaze. And this is something that you can decide to do later, but if you see the glaze sort of beads up on the surface, or in this case, the marking mix, beaded and kind of came out of the line. That's just based on the quality of the wax sometimes that happens, but if you really want that to go away because you will see it in the firing, you can come back with a sponge later and wipe that back. So that's the outside of this one done. I'm just gonna leave it, I don't mind the marks. And I'm gonna use it on the interior of the rim as well. So this bowl's done, can go onto the glaze shelf. So got a little bit of concentric circles on the back, so it's sort of reflecting itself there. So that one's done. I'm gonna use the marking mix one more time, this time on this teapot, so you can just see a more, a little bit more complex design. I'm kind of curious myself how this one's gonna come out, so let's see. You can see this teapot change quite a bit just from this marking mix. All right. 
So not too bad. Um, again, this is a the Doug's White Chino underneath, and then I applied the wax, and then this is just the black marquee mix getting brushed on top of it. So it's gonna yield a similar result in color as this little ink tray that I've been using. So all the black you'll see will be black, and then all the white that you're gonna be seeing is gonna be this white to orange chino. All right, so that's marquee mixes. Okay, so this pot had marquee mix as well as wax applied, and you can see once it's dipped into the glaze, how the wax actually will resist the second glaze. And just like with any other pot, I'll need to wipe the foot before setting it on our glaze shelf.